Super Bowl champ, 92 Cowboys, Steve Berline now joining us live. You know, we're talking about that. It is interesting about you've been a quarterback before, and there's a lot of these, you know, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers stuff. Denver's a great roster, but they got a new owner. You have no idea who the coach is. Indianapolis, even if you look at their division, it's such a goofy division. You could go in and win the thing tomorrow, it feels like. Um, What would you do with Carson Wentz? What would you do with him? You know, I, I'm a huge Carson Wentz fan, uh, Colin. I, I was really, really excited for him getting back together with Frank Reich, and, and I thought that was the perfect fit. In fact, when that move was made, I actually tweeted about it. I said the Colts just got themselves in Super Bowl contention. Uh, I thought it was going to work out much better than it did. Uh, I really was disappointed with uh, how Carson Wentz performed during the course of the season, and I, I thought they had kind of – figured things out down the stretch there as they were coming into those final two games. Obviously, there was zero doubt in anybody's mind that they were going to make the playoffs. Uh, and then to lose two consecutive games to the Raiders and the Jaguars, I understand their frustration and why they're uh, so bitterly disappointed and, and why they're scratching their heads as to whether or not they made the right move. So uh, I, I don't know where Carson Wynn stands. I know Frank Reich went to bat for him. I know Frank White, Reich wanted him very badly, and he thought – that they had secured their quarterback position for the foreseeable future. And now, after this season, it's back in doubt again. So I think the pressure more than any quarterback this weekend is Matt Stafford. And I think we would both uh, – he was the number one high school quarterback. Uh, out of Georgia, he was the number one college quarterback. Uh, and then he goes to Detroit, and we know Detroit's not well run. But a lot of talented quarterbacks go to franchises that aren't well run, and they win playoff games. And so there's always been this thing with Stafford is that he's a little bit of a pat, a stat patter, big arm, too many mistakes. Some of it's on him. If he lost this weekend, um, the reaction's going to be punitive, right? Like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I f- I feel like there is pressure on Matt. He's denying it, but I honestly feel like Matt. I could ha- I could keep Jared Goff and lose to Arizona in the first round. That's why I mean, right? Yeah, I, I, it, it would be devastating if Matt Stafford did not find a way to get, I, I believe, deep into the playoffs. I'm talking NFC Championship, you know, going to Green Bay in a showdown with Aaron Rodgers. That, it, he's the other quarterback in the league. If you ask me who, who else is the most disappointing other than Carson Wentz, I'd say Matthew Stafford with his lack of consistency and how he has really held the Rams back down the stretch. I mean, uh, the, the number of interceptions that he's thrown in the last four or five weeks – I lose track. It's 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 not it's not acceptable the way that he's been playing. And I think a lot of the problem he's been trying to force the ball into Cooper Cup a little bit too much. He's become kind of a uh, dependent on Cooper Cup in all the big situations. And obviously Cooper Cup's had a tremendous year. But at a quarter as a quarterback, you've got to go through your reads, especially at the big moments. You cannot try to force the issue. And I know for a fact that he's missed some opportunities trying to stick the ball uh, into Cooper Cup in big situations down the stretch. And that will hold them back. That will come back to haunt them in the playoffs. Saying, Having said all that, though, I still expect the Rams and Matt Stafford. I'm a huge fan of Matthew Stafford. Uh, I, re- I had him on my fantasy teams. Uh, he's the guy that I was counting on all year. So uh, I-, I really think he's going to come up big in the playoffs and play really well. He's in a great situation. I think he's going to uh, show up big for the Rams in the playoffs. All right. So I went and looked at a list of the six rookie quarterbacks that have won their first playoff game. And it's a weird list of Mark Sanchez and TJ Yates and Sean King and big Ben. And there's no rhyme or reason to any of it. Some are hall of famers, some are, you know, cup of coffee in the NFL guys right. go back to early in your career. Mac Jones is going up against Josh Allen. The weather's cold. It's not going to be high scoring. Situational football is going to be key. Go back to your first year or two in the league, in your first couple big games if there was a playoff game. Did the nerves act up? Did it feel different? Oh, it feels different for sure. I mean, you know. And the way a young quarterback really uh, gets to that understanding, I think, is when you you see the way the veterans are preparing and you see how – focus they are I mean it obviously to produce and perform in the last in the NFL you've got to get ready each and every week as as though it's a playoff game but when you get to the playoffs it is just a totally different vibe I mean guys realize 
uh, what a big opportunity they have and how hard it is to get to the dance and get in the dance. And uh, now the Patriots are there. Mac Jones is going to understand very clearly how big this is. And working against them, I mean, this is the time of year where it gets really, really hard for rookie quarterbacks to to process and to to get through things. And Mac Jones has played like a rookie the last few weeks, if we're being honest. Now, he, he played better this past week. Uh, but but in general, down the stretch, he has kind of reverted a little bit, and that's very concerning to me. Going into Buffalo this time of year against Josh Allen uh, and that Buffalo Bills team, I think that's going to be a little too daunting for Mac Jones to overcome. Uh, I expect Buffalo to take this football game. Here's an interesting one. Um, what the what the Raiders have done is insane. The chaos, it really is. it's insane. Yeah. It makes no every other playoff team. I can explain it. Even the ones like Philadelphia that surprise me, I'm like they they they're the best running team in the league. I mean they just they just they just dominate time of possession. The Raiders make no sense. You got a new coach, Henry Ruggs. They bailed on their first round pick. They've been banged up. Darren Waller didn't play, and they've won every close game. But here's what worries me this week, and I need your insight. That defense for the Raiders was on the field for 88 plays. Now, and they played late Sunday. Now they go on the road and lose a day. And I'm like, and they got to go play Cincinnati's offense? Like, I can see them just collapsing on the road. You tell me, when you're in wildly close, long games, did it? you feel it the following week? Yes, you do feel it the following week, but I think this Raiders team thinks they're a team of destiny. I mean, I think they really believe that with all they've been up against this whole season, I think they believe they are meant to make a, a very, very strong statement in the playoffs. I don't know if they've got themselves convinced yet they're ready for a Super Bowl run, but to get into the playoffs with all that was working against them, as you said, uh, it's truly amazing. And that defense really has stepped up. Max Crosby was absolutely unstoppable against the Chargers last week. Um, I don't expect them to have a letdown. Uh, but like you said, going into Cincinnati against that high-powered offense, that is a, a very, very tall task. And I think what the Raiders' offensive focus has got to be, it's got to be a keeping the football away from Joe Burrow so they don't have their defense on the field for 88 plays. If Joe Burrow has the ball for 88 plays, that means they're running away from the Raiders. There's no, absolutely no doubt in my mind if that situation repeats itself, the Raiders will get blown out this week. All right, I'm going to show you all the playoff games. We'll put them up on the screen for you. Uh, I think they're all going to be close. Kansas City, Pittsburgh, I'm not even – I'm not going to – Tomlin's <laughs> a great underdog coach, but that one could get a little ugly. Yeah. Is there any yeah. other underdog here – that be it the Niners or or the Raiders or the Cardinals or Philadelphia um, it is here we go underdog also uh, uh, New England. What dog do you think right there? What dog as they say will hunt? Who's the upset? There's, a, there's actually one dog I feel really good about, and that's Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers. I really really like what they're doing right now. How they took over that game against the Rams in the second half. Did you did you watch how they just literally pounded the Rams into submission that second half? After being down 17 to nothing, 17 to 3 at the half, we all know Sean McVay was 45 and 0 uh coming into that game in games where he took a lead in the halftime and the Niners absolutely just pounded them into submission in that second half. And think about this too, Colin. The Cowboys are 5 and 3 in their last 8 games. The five wins, none of them have been playoff teams. The three losses, all of them were to playoff teams. Mm. So I like the Niners going in there with the confidence they have with that defense and the way they're going to be committed to the run and keeping Dallas off the field. I I think the Niners can go in there and take control of that football game. Dropping gems right there. How about that? Steve Berline. (laughs) All right, great seeing you. Have a nice weekend. Hey, take care, Colin. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.